They will watch you. Your book or your journal. You have to change. You have to touch their flesh. I believed it. You believed it? So I wrote unorthodox time. articles and I tried to make unorthodox paper. Mm -hmm. And and it didn't lie, it wasn't successful. It was success. The paper was successful. I was not successful. I was fired. But of course, what we're really trying to do is, is establish what the threshold of tolerance is here for any kind of personal expression, whether it's literary or political. Or indeed, you know, when, when the two are blended. And you could say that good writing sublimates the political. It seems to be about the human condition, but it's also about politics. But regardless of the quality of the writing, we in the West certainly look to our government to give us full reign of expression, so long as it's not a, an explicit incitement to violence. In Turkey, meanwhile, what constitutes incitement to violence, or any other number of crimes, can be a matter of Byzantine logic. The unpredictability and arbitrariness of Turkey's penal system in this area is what has aroused concern on the part of international organizations such as PEN, Amnesty International, and Human Rights Watch. And, as we shall see next, the difference foreign attention can make is what we aimed to explore. Many small Turkish publishers deal with constant harassment, fines, and threats of imprisonment. Under the anti-terror law, publishing literature, fiction or non, that addresses Kurdish issues may at any time be considered illegal. Belga Publishing began in 1977 to investigate the rights of minorities, pioneering books on the Armenian genocide and books that acknowledge the Kurds' very existence, earning Belga numerous charges of publishing separatist propaganda. I understand, first of all, in Turkey, you submit a copy of every new book that's being published to a certain committee, is that right? After uh, printing, uh, the printer must <coughs> send copies to uh, uh, special uh, police. You would like to, they uh, could read all pages, but unfortunately uh, they are uh, reading some pages, uh, front pages, back pages, <laughs> and from the, tight, uh, the like name of the reviewer. writer or the, from the name of the publishing house, mm -hmm. you, if you use only the, the, the uh, name of Kurdistan, mm -hmm. it is uh, one reason for confiscating book, because officially there is, uh, no such there is not such a country like that. If you use that, it means separatism. Yes. As you see, uh, you can see in these uh, titles, uh, General uh, Anatolian literature, Armenian, uh, Turkish, uh, Greek, Jewish, yes. and Kurdish literature. These are our uh, titles in the area of uh, literature. Not well, a lot of comedy so far. Do you, <laughs> do you, do you publish satire at all? Uh, sh uh, sure, uh, there is, a, uh, but uh, not so much. Uh, most uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> we are focused on dra dramatic. <laughs> on the dramatic side, yes. <laughs> For me, the most remarkable chapter in Belga's saga has to do with charges brought against Ragib's wife, Aysenur. I've often heard the expression Kafkaesque nightmare used too trendily, but never with such aptness as in Ragib's letter to International Pen, relating how, in March of 2002, he attended a new trial against his wife. The problem was, that Isenor had been dead for two months. The government nevertheless insisted on prosecuting her until its bureaucracy produced an official death certificate. Isenor, she was a very courageous woman, mm -hmm. from what I've read, and something of a pioneer, am I right? Was she yes. the, the first woman in Turkey to be the head of a publishing house? Uh, not uh, uh, publishing house, but she was the first uh, director of big uh, distribution 
company during military regime. And why is that important or significant? And, uh, yes, uh, she went on distributing democratic books during military regime also. Uh -huh. And during the military regime arrested two times because of that. Uh -huh. uh, there was a need, <laughs> so kind of a courage, uh, for to change uh, the system in Turkey. It's not just the publication of Kurdish issues that can land you in trouble in Turkey, but it sure is a lightning rod. Here's someone who publishes Kurdish literature as well as radical cultural theory and journalism from around the world. His name is Fatih Tash, he's 22. He was convicted of spreading separatist propaganda for publishing Noam Chomsky's book, American Interventionism. <laughs> Edward Said, Edward Said, Noam Chomsky, Noam Chomsky. Um, Molière, Molière, Kurdish, yani Kürtçe'ye çevir. Bu da bir PKK It's the book of a guerrilla, PKK guerrilla, the poetry. Guerrilla poetry? Yeah. Never heard of that before. Okay, where should we go? Tash's case, the Turkish media said, caused Turkey international embarrassment when Chomsky came to Istanbul, demanding he be tried alongside Tash in court. Şimdi Chomsky'nin kitabına işte dava açıldığını öğrendiğimiz zaman bizim için ilginç oldu yani çok böyle hafif bir beklenti vardı ama çok değil. Olunca biz de kendisine haber verdik. Yani sonuçta burada bir kitaba dava açılıyorsa o kitabın yazarı da bundan sorumludur. Yani on... biz de bunun bilgisini verdik kendisine. Kendisi de bunu ilginç karşıladı. Ee, ve Türkiye'ye gelebileceğini bu konuda bu davayla da işte sizlerle dayanışmak için Türkiye'ye gelmek istedi. Türkiye'ye gelmek istediğini kendisi söyledi. Çabuk normal bir şey değil. Yani Chomsky daha önceden işte zaten belli bir şeyim var. Biliyoruz da Chomsky ne kadar önemli bir insan olduğunu insan biliyor yani. Onun dışında hani bunun asıl heyecan verici yani Chomsky bir insanın demokratik bir adım için Türkiye'ye gelmesi, Türkiye'ye gelmeye karar verilmesi. Bu en çok bu beni heyecanlandırdı. Çünkü bu Türkiye'deki bu düşüncenin ifade edilmesi önündeki engellerle mücadelede çok ciddi bir adım, çok ciddi bir girişimdi ki nitekim Türkiye'de bir ilk oldu. İlk davada beraat etti. Bu Chomsky'nin gelmesiyle birebir bağlantılı. En çok heyecanı ben oradan duydum. Yani. What exactly were Chomsky's allegations that Tash published that were illegal in the eyes of the Turkish state? Here. Allow me to come back to the second issue, Turkey and the Kurds. Now, the Kurds have been miserably oppressed throughout the whole history of the modern Turkish state. In 1984, the Turkish government launched a major war in the southeast against the Kurdish population. The end result was pretty awesome. Uh, tens of thousands of people killed, two to three million refugees, a massive ethnic cleansing with some 3,500 uh, villages destroyed. Uh, that's basically lifted from um, Human Rights Watch reports and standard scholarly sources. It's, you know, you can argue a little about the numbers, but it's uh, basically just common knowledge. Uh, that's, the par that's the one paragraph in the book, it was a collection of essays, one transcript of a talk at a university, and uh, that's that paragraph that uh, Fatih Tash was uh, brought to trial for uh, having published in Turkish translation. Uh, and if there hadn't been international tension, he'd be in jail. Mm. Turkey recently introduced legal reforms to Kurdish language laws, broadcasting rights and the death penalty. Much of this was regarded with alarm by Turkey's conservative elite, but after years of economic recession, the country wants acceptance into the European Union and, like it or not, human rights are very much on the agenda. So as we discovered, things are improving, but one may have to accept that, like the EU process itself, democracy takes time. Well, actually, I I went to Turkey with a good deal of foreboding, but uh, I came back uh, very hopeful and uh, in a way kind of inspired. It's maybe the only place I can think of uh, where the uh, intellectual elite behaves very differently. Uh, leading writers, uh, artists, uh, academics, uh, um, 
journalists uh, and others are right in the forefront of a very courageous struggle for freedom of speech and uh, human rights and the rights of the miserably oppressed Kurdish uh, population. And they're not only talking about it, they're constantly carrying out direct civil disobedience. One grows up, develops, matures according to one's soil. Mehmed grew on barren soil. A thousand and one misfortunes prevented him from ever growing to his full height. His shoulders no longer developed. His arms and legs were like dry branches. Hollow cheeks, dark face charred by the sun. His appearance was that of an oak, short and gnarled. He was like a firmly rooted oak, strong and tough. Only one point, one tiny point was still fresh. His lips were red as a child's, delicately curved. A smile always seemed to hover at the corner of his lips. Somehow, it matched his hardness, his bitterness. Yashar Kemal is Turkey's preeminent author, in spite of the fact that he's a Kurd. He's as old as the modern republic itself. He was one of the first champions in the struggle for freedom of expression in 20th century Turkey, and is still one of its strongest voices. Bizim için artık cesaret değil bu. Biz hapishaneyi de kabul ediyoruz, sürümü de kabul ediyoruz Türkiye'nin yazarları. Penkulüp ne yapabilir ki? Bugün dinlemiyor penkulübü. Bu yarı diktatoryalar. Bir penkulüp falan dinlemezler. Bunlar bir hem demokratiz, demokratiz diyorlar, bir uydurma bir demokrat. Ben de insanları bir diktatör kadar hapsedebiliyorlar. Çok tehlikeli bir şey bu insanlık için. Böyle rejimler. Böyle devlet düzenleri, hükümet düzenleri çok tehlikelidir insanlar için. Yani diktatoryadan daha tehlikelidir bu düzenler. Ama Türkiye yavaş yavaş iyiye doğru gidiyor. Tam iyiye doğru gitmediyse de, tam bir demokrasiye ulaşmadıysa bir miktar de şey aldı, mesafe aldı Türkiye. The writers and publishers we've profiled in this documentary represent three generations of struggle in Turkey, spanning in effect the whole of modern Turkey's short history. The degree to which they've been tolerated or punished has paralleled the political issues and tensions of these growing years, and a number of them involving the Kurds, the EU, Cyprus, Islam and the Middle East are still very much in flux. How writers fare in the future will likely depend on how these issues are resolved. In the meantime, one can only watch with admiration as they press for openness, for social change. I couldn't help but wonder if I would muster the same courage were I in their shoes. Thank you.
as I'm concerned, Western literature has a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh -huh.